All right, here we go, everybody. Today's presentation, this is our monthly new partner introduction. So this is a webinar um, we put together to provide sort of a high level overview of our channel products. Um, for those of you that are new partners, new employees at existing partners, or just those of you looking for sort of a refresh of all the products we offer, we have over 300 SKUs on our price list. Um, so it, it's uh, really understandable that uh, you may not be familiar with all of them. We're not going to go too in depth on 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 these. It's it's because because there is so many and we've got a limited amount of time. So we're going to go through this pretty quickly. Um, but as we go through today, go ahead and send your questions in using the Q and A interface. Um, I will not be able to see hands raised as we go through or see the chat. So um, send any questions in via the Q and A. And we'll go ahead and get started here with just sort of a brief introduction on who Zycel is, for those of you not familiar with us. Um, we started way back in 1989 making computer networking equipment. Specifically, um, a big area for us has been modems, particularly modems back in those days that were aimed at dial-up um, dial up internet service providers and bulletin board systems. From there, we've evolved and moved into DSL modems. We sold cable modems for a long time, um, and various other products. So we've got over 100 million devices deployed out in the field. Um, we serve 150 different global markets. In the US, our headquarters is based out of Anaheim, California. Let me go ahead and mute my phone here so we don't hear that all day. Um, so we're based out of Anaheim, California. So that's our warehouse, that's our sales, that's our marketing, and that's also our tech support. So when you call in for tech support, you are talking to a Zycel employee based out of our Anaheim office. So the reason you're here today is because you are likely one of our channel partners. So as a channel partner, you get access to webinars like we've got today. You get access to pre-sales support, our channel sales engineer, deal registrations, partner discounts, et cetera. Uh, priority line to get tech support help. So in the channel, we break up our products here into a couple different categories, um, security appliances, wireless solutions, switches, gateways and hotspot management, um, and network management. So we're gonna primarily be talking about the first three there and then a little bit here on network management, um, just a little bit on that. Uh, for Consumer routers, we're not really going to talk about that today, nor are we going to talk about service provider offerings. Um, so we'll start by going through and talking about our security appliances. So we have been ICSA certified now for 20 years straight. So ICSA Labs is currently owned by Verizon, but they're an independent group that basically sets standards and uh, testing and evaluations on uh, security products, VPN products. So we've been certified with them for 20 years in a row now. So something we do a little bit differently on our security appliances um, is rather than try to create um, signatures in in-house, you know, trying to be both a hardware vendor, software manufacturer, and an expert on security and things like that. Instead, what we've done is we are partnering up with some of the bigger names in the industry for our signatures. So when you're using our UTM services, um, you know, you're, they're being powered by McAfee, Webroot, Trend Micro, LastLine, Bitdefender, et cetera. So in general, um, these, th these features we're gonna be talking about here, these are, are available on our security products. There may be some variation depending on the specific model or model line, but for the most part, what we're gonna talk about and cover right now is available on most of our security products. Is, products. So VPN high availability, the ability to have two IPsec tunnels and have, um, have them either do load balancing or failover. WAN load balancing, multiple WANs, virtual tunnel interface, basically allowing you to trunk VPN tunnels together. We have SSL VPN secure extender. So that is the software that lets you basically um, use the same technology that's used to protect encrypted web pages to create easy VPN connections from a client device back to the office. Um, L2TP over IPsec for mobile devices. Um, an easy B VPN functionality here, making it easy to set up these uh, VPN features. SHA-2 VPN. On the UTM side of things, we offer antivirus at the gateway, content filtering, including encrypted web pages, 
Um, layer seven application intelligence. So this allows us to go in and know um, what different apps look like and what some of those features are. Um, it, it's helpful for reports so you can see which specific apps are being used. It also makes it easier for you to set up your policy rules because you can go in instead of needing to know ports and IP ranges and traffic and stuff like that, you can just use a pull down to pull down various different applications and their individual behaviors so that you can then create your policy rules on those. Geo Enforcer, you know, um, if you're based out of Ohio serving local businesses, you probably have no need for, um, you know, going to or being hit by um, traffic from Russia, for instance. So you can block those with the Geo Enforcer. Um, our ATP series offers sandboxing and machine learning. We've got the ability here to do botnet and malware blockers. IDP, intrusion detection and prevention, a reputation filter. And then most of our boxes also offer a built-in Wi-Fi controller. So you can manage your APs directly from the gateway without the need for a separate wireless LAN controller. And also hotspot functionality. So the ability to be able to um, provide guest access, whether it's just somebody visiting a corporate office or a small hotel, restaurant, coffee shop, things like that. We have the ability here to set up what are called link aggregation groups, um, letting you do active, back to, active backup load balancing. Um, high availability pro is a functionality there, um, which basically keeps everything seamless between two different firewall gateways, SSL packet inspection, and radius and active directory integration. So these days, a lot of cloud-based services are being hosted um, either in AWS or Microsoft's Azure. So we are certified on these um, to be able to create um, a direct VPN connection to these clouds. So it allows you to you know, deploy services on these hosted cloud serv servers and then have them be, um, as far as your clients are aware, locally hosted using a dedicated VPN. So this is something that we've actually been tested and certified by both of these companies to be able to create this private VPN to their cloud hosted services. So moving on, we'll talk about the VPN series. So the VPN series of products are products that are optimized to provide lots of VPN tunnels. They don't provide UTM services, um, just basic content filtering. They do have the wireless LAN controller built in and the ability to do device high availability. The primary difference between these, and this will be true across all the different products we talk about today, um, the primary difference between the models is going to be the port configuration and just how much horsepower, how much throughput each of the devices has. So these also have the ability to be turned into an SD-WAN gateway product. So this is a one-time, this is a license that you buy. Um, activate and it switches it from the VPN firewall to an SD-WAN firewall device. So we'll talk briefly here about SD-WAN. So SD-WAN is primarily viewed as a uh, way as an alternative to MPLS. So in the old days when you were trying to connect multiple offices together, particularly if you're doing VoIP, you pay the phone company a lot of money every month for a dedicated slow connection between your different uh, locations. Um, so what SD-WAN does is it allows you to use VPNs over the internet as a replacement for MPLS services. So the way this works, you go, well, that's regular VPN. So with SD, and that's not what SD-WAN is. So SD-WAN is using VPNs, but because we control both ends of the VPN tunnel, both WAN interfaces, we're able to game the system in such a way that you get much faster and much more reliable um, connections than you would over a standard VPN. So it allows you to connect offices together affordably over a standard internet connection and get the sort of reliability that you normally would only get with an MPLS. So we'll give a little brief example here, maybe, if my slide will advance. There we go. So this is an example that we did here. So this is our office in Taiwan. This is our head office there. And this is our German office. So you can see here there's a 290 millisecond 
uh, ping. There's 0.3% loss, very small 3% jitter. So what we did is we used an FTP transfer of 1.9 gigabit files between the offices. So a, a standard WAN connection here, it took two hours and 40 minutes. Um, and that's because, because of the little bit of loss, because of the, uh, the um, ping times here, um, TCP will slow this down and slow it down as things go here. Um, just at any time it encounters an issue, it slows things down. So on a big file like this, it can really start slowing stuff down. So using SD-WAN, the WAN optimization technology, it reduces the transfer time from two hours, 40 minutes down to just 10 minutes to transfer that 1.9 gig file. So we're talking an average speed over the whole transfer uh, from 300 kilobits per second up to 24 megabits per second. So a huge difference there. Um, because of these speed increases, because of these reliability increases, SD-WAN is really good for VoIP applications when you're doing direct VoIP between multiple locations. So moving on here to the NSG series. So the NSG series are our Nebula cloud gateways. Um, so these are our firewall products that only work with our Nebula service. And we'll talk a little bit more about what Nebula is later. Um, but the idea behind these is to simplify gateways, to give you the core functionality that most people need in a simple, easy to use interface. Um, so you won't see quite the same set of features. You won't see a lot of the detailed policy routes and things like that that you would see with our other firewall gateways. It's designed to make this easy to set up, easy to deploy. So we've got the ability here to um, Basically, you plug in the gateway, it'll automatically connect to the internet, find out the customer and location it's supposed to be at, it'll automatically update its firmware, download the configuration. It makes it really easy to deploy VPNs. We have the ability to just go in, choose the different locations you want to VPN together, choose the topology you want to use, click apply, um, and it'll automatically take care of all the rest of the configurations. For client VPNs back into the office, we have the ability to use emailed scripts to automatically configure Macintosh, Windows, and iOS devices. Uh, we do offer UTM services through that, through the Nebula Security Services Program. So that includes antivirus, content filtering, IDP, and application intelligence. From there, we talk about a little bit here about the USG series. So this has been our key core um, firewall products for, for years and years and years, the Zywall USG series. So these are our, our security appliances that were designed primarily for UTM. So if you're looking to deploy UTM, these are the models you want. Um, we do offer most of these SKUs also in a version which doesn't come with the UTM services out of the box. Um, and these offer you know, device high availability, the wireless LAN controller, et cetera. So these though, most of these are going away and these will be replaced now with our new USG Flex series. So the USG Flex series sort of bridges the Nebula gateways um, with the USG gateways. So it is a brand new platform, much better performance than the original USG series. Um, Right now, these operate just as the USGs as a standalone device, but coming next year, these will also be able to be used in Nebula. Uh, so these will be a, both a replacement for the NSG gateways and for the regular USG series. So firewall performance, up to 125% increase in firewall performance, up to a 500% increase in UTM performance. And we've made it really easy for you to be able to transition from the older USG series to the USG Flex series. So one of the things that happens here is we have the ability to um, transfer over existing licenses that you may have on your existing USG. So you can upgrade to the USG Flex more easily. Now you may run into a situation if you're not using the one-year bundles, if you're individually buying different services, where the different services are expiring at different times. So when you do the migration from a USG to a USG Flex, we'll automatically upgrade all services based on whichever service it currently has the most amount of time left on it. 
So that holds true also for um, the bundled services. So you buy a USG Flex, it comes with one year of service. And if you're migrating over from a regular USG, you'll then get the extra bonus months that will carry over from your original license or that original US, USG device. So this is how devices are gonna be mapped. Um, if you're currently buying the USG 40 and 40W, you should move over to the USG Flex 100 series. The USG 60s will move over to the USG Flex 200. USG 110s to the USG Flex 500. Same with the 210. And the 310 will move over to the 700 of the USG Flex series. So the USG Flex series models are available now. Most models of USG though, we still have those in stock. Um, and several of these, these will be around for a little while. Um, I think we're starting to get low on the 40s. Um, so this is something where you will have going forward, you will need to start moving over to the USG Flex. The other series we have that's not going to go anywhere is the ATP series, the Advanced Threat Protection. So these are our sandboxing firewall devices. So um, these are for those of you that want to do sandboxing instead of traditional UTM. So we'll talk here a little bit. So this is your, your you know, conventional UTM that would apply to the USGs, the USG Flex, the NSGs, and basically they work with signatures. So in our case, we've partnered up with, you know, McAfee and other, others to provide these signatures on a regular basis. So they provide signatures, you know, of spam sites, antivirus, whatever it happens to be. Um, and then we use those to look at traffic and say, okay, does that match a signature? And then yes, is that a good signature or is that a bad signature? And if bad, then we block the traffic or do whatever it is you've set it up to do when it sees something. The problem you run into though, is it takes time to create these signatures, right? Um, some new traffic comes along, some new application, whether it's a malicious application or a positive application, you know, it takes time for these new, new uh, applications hit the market for the companies providing the signatures to be able to find, notice the new, to, new product, figure out signatures to identify the new type of traffic and classify them. So there's a gap that we would call a zero day exploit, which is you know the gap between when a, a new threat is uh, launched on the market versus when it can be identified and blocked. So that's what sandboxing is designed to help us with. So basically what happens with it, um, whoops, there we go, is we're able to then use the cloud to identify these middle unknown new types of traffic that are out there. So basically what happens is all of the ATP series are linked to our smart cloud. So as more of these get deployed and more of these get used, there's more and more devices feeding into this cloud. And what happens is, whoops, thought I had another slide there, I guess I don't. Um, so what happens is, is um, we see this new type of traffic, we don't know what it is. Your ATP device takes that traffic, uploads it into the cloud, and the cloud uses a whole bunch of different virtual machines and simulations and artificial intelligence to see what this new type of traffic is and whether it's positive or negative. Once it figures it out, it then pushes it out via the cloud to all the ATPs deployed in the, in the field. So basically, as more and more ATPs get deployed in the field, the quicker we'll be able to see these new forms of traffic and the quicker we'll be able to identify them and let you know this is good and this is bad. And then you can set up rules in that meantime um, to say what to do with unidentified traffic. Do you block it? Do you let it through until you know it's bad? You know, do you block it until you know it's good, et cetera? So the other thing we offer is a piece of software out there called Secu Reporter. So this is for monitoring and generating reports for your USG products. So it provides reports, alerts, analysis, and monitoring. So basically your, um, your, your USGs out in the field take log data, application data, upload it to the server, analytics are performed, and then Secure Reporter gives you a dashboard to easily see what's going on to generate reports and see alerts. So it makes it a really easy way for you to see what's going on in your customer networks. 
particularly if you're doing MSP services or doing security services, where you need to justify the expense of those UTM subscriptions. So this is a great way to be able to show your customers, here's what the antivirus found, here's what the content filtering has been blocking, you know, so you can show them this is what we've done. These are the viruses we've blocked. This is the time we're saving, et cetera. And basically, all your USGs that you've deployed, regardless of customer, all feedback to the same Secure Extender um, interface. So you can see them all at one place. You don't have to, you know, run multiple servers for each individual customer. Reports can be customized based on what information is included, how often these reports are run, who they are sent to, and we do have the ability to add your own branding to it. So when it gets sent out, you can have it sent out to your customer um, with your branding on there. So now we'll move on to Nebula. So Nebula is our cloud managed network Cloud, cloud network management interface. It's basically started originally as a series of dedicated products that could only be managed through the cloud. Um, and since then we've expanded Nebula to quite a few number of products as an option. So the whole idea behind Nebula is to make it easier and simpler to deploy networks, to monitor networks, to upgrade networks. So one of the cool things we can do here is you don't have to take a product out of the box to configure it. In fact, you don't even have to necessarily have received the product to start configuring it. Um, at any point, you can log into the Nebula cloud interface, create a new customer, create new sites, and start configuring the basic switch and gateway and wireless settings that you want. Once you do have the hardware in hand, you can use our mobile app to scan the QR code that's available both on the product itself and on the box, and then assign it to the customer site. Um, where it's going to end up going, and then you just ship it off to them. So in some cases, you can even have your customer do the end user installation because there's no configuration that you generally need to do on the devices directly. It's all done through the cloud. Basically, once you plug it in, it will reach out to the cloud, see which customer and which site it's been assigned to, and automatically update the configuration based on that for you. To use Nebula, it's all done through the cloud. There's no additional hardware or software required. So there's no cloud keys, CNCs, wireless LAN controllers, um, virtual machines, anything like that. Um, the Nebula client is built into the hardware itself and it's automatically able to go through transverse uh, most firewalls and NATs, reach out to the cloud. So you're able to see all of your customers, all of their sites, and status and all of those anywhere you have access to a mobile phone or a uh, laptop. So the mobile app gives you an ability to take a quick look at what's going on in your customer networks. It's been primarily designed though to be used by your installers. So you use the app to scan the QR codes to assign products to different customers. You can also use the app to take photos of the product as you install them, and then those photos are stored in the cloud. So if someone has to go on site later, they can see a photo of where the, each individual device has been installed so they know which one they're going to. There's some basic configuration you can do primarily working around Wi-Fi. Um, so that's the mobile app. We also have huge flexibility when it comes to guest access using the network here. So if you just want to provide wireless guest access, you can just apply that to the individual access points. If you're looking to do wired and wireless, then you can do, run it off the gateway. And there's just tons of flexibility here. You can have uh, people log in with usernames and passwords. You can have them authenticate against the database. You can have them register and create their own accounts. You can just simply have them agree to a terms of service, log in with their Facebook accounts. Lots of flexibility there. Um, you can customize the captive portal. Um, we've got sort of a, what you see is what you get interface, so you can lay things out. If that's not good enough for you, you can download the HTML and CSS files, edit them, and then re-upload them to the cloud or point them to a server that you run. All updates are done over the air, so configuration changes are applied um, through the cloud. Firmware updates are applied over the air or through the cloud, and you can schedule those. Um, so there's no need to go on site to do the updates on firmware. And we have some smart intelligence that goes into the uh, configuration changes to make sure those configuration changes are applied in such an order 
that no device loses connectivity or falls off the network uh, because something was configured in the wrong order. So a Nebula itself is free. The core version of Nebula is free. Um, it offers you the ability to manage an unlimited number of customers, an unlimited number of sites, and an unlimited number of products for free. We do have a couple value add services that we will talk about here coming up. So as I mentioned earlier, originally there was dedicated Nebula hardware. You had to buy the Nebula hardware to work with the Nebula cloud. These days now we have something called Nebula Flex and Nebula Flex Pro. So Nebula Flex are devices that can be used either in the traditional standalone management or can be used and managed via Nebula. And you can easily switch between the different modes. So this way you can standardize on one set of products and use them whether you're using cloud management for that customer or more traditional management. On the AP side of things, we also have something called Nebula Flex Pro. So Nebula Flex Pro, in addition to using the options to manage either standalone or with the cloud, also means these APs can also be managed with a wireless LAN controller. They also include one year of the Nebula Pro Pack feature um, bundled with them if you decide to use these with Nebula. So let's talk about um, Nebula Pro Pack. So Nebula Pro Pack is an optional subscription service you pay for that unlocks additional features in the Nebula cloud. Um, those features are primarily aimed at, um, oops, are primarily aimed at um, MSP type services, more diagnostics, longer log retention, things like that. The other service that we offer, which is an add-on, is the Nebula Security Services. So all of our NSG gateways come with one year of these services bundled with them. And then after that, you do have to buy a license. Um, and that unlocks antivirus, content filtering, application control, intrusion detection and prevention, um, and a bunch of analytics and reporting tools. So Nebula, again, is free. Nebula Pro Pack is available either as an annual license or as a one-time perpetual license. And so what it's unlocking here is we go from seven days of log stored in the cloud to a full year's worth of log stored in the cloud, automatic email alerts and reports. Um, we create an automatic visual topology of your network to help with troubleshooting. We unlock more admin accounts that you can use. Um, we have an audit log where we track every configuration change made and who made those changes over the past year, again, to help you with troubleshooting things. Um, and they unlock some more advanced features on a couple things. They unlock uh, advanced IGMP settings on the switches, and they unlock a number of different reports that you can generate. So again, Nebula is free. You're welcome to upgrade to the professional pack if you think these extra features would benefit you or your customers. And then we've also got the security pack for the NSG gateways, which unlock the UTM services. So we'll blow through here the devices. So on the NSG gateway side of things, we've got four different gateways. And again, the primary difference between these is the port configuration and the throughput. So for instance, here you can see the NSG 100 has a 450 meg firewall throughput versus over one gig on the NSG 200. Top of the line is the NSG 300. And again, these, these products will go away some point next year as we migrate to the USG flexes. On the switch side of things, we have the dedicated NSW switches, which only work with Nebula. And then we've got our Nebula flex switches, which are the GS 1920V2s, XGS 1930s, XS 1930s, XS 3800s, the GS 2220 series, and the GS 1350 series. So all of those that I've mentioned, except for the NSWs, can be used as your traditional standalone network switch, or can operate and be managed by the Nebula cloud. And on the AP side of things, basically everything these days now supports Nebula, either the standard Nebula, Nebula Flex, or Nebula Flex Pro. So now we'll start talking a little bit about wireless. We're just going to focus on some of the technology that we've got so that you may not see if you haven't been selling Zycel equipment. So one thing we offer on several of our models is something called a dual optimized antenna. Basically, your traditional access point 
is optimized to be mounted on a ceiling central to the area that needs to be covered and it sends the pattern out in a nice big circle. Unfortunately, out in the real world, sometimes you get stuck having to mount APs onto walls. So now you've got an AP, it's rotated 90 degrees, and the, the antenna coverage pattern is not optimal for covering the area. It sends a lot of the signal up into the ceiling, a lot of the signal down into the floor. So with dual optimized antennas, these access points that have this have two different sets of antennas. One that's optimized for your traditional ceiling mount deployment, and then a second set of antennas that are optimized for being mounted on a wall. And you can switch back and forth between which antenna pattern you want to use based on where you've installed the individual AP. The other technology we have is smart antenna technology. So if you've sold Ruckus before, you're probably familiar with smart antenna. So it's a very similar thing here, basically. Um, just to clarify here, beam forming is a separate technology from smart antenna. This is something where we run into where people get confused thinking beam forming and smart antenna are the same thing. They're not, they're two completely different things with two different purposes. So I also wanna talk briefly here about co-channel interference. So co-channel interference is probably the bane of Wi-Fi deployments. Basically, you've got a limited amount of RF spectrum that you have to share with every device that's using wireless, right? Not just Wi-Fi devices, but Bluetooth devices. And some industrial equipment puts out interference as well. I know um, air conditioners tend to put out RF interference. Microwaves use 2.4 gigahertz technology to cook your food, same technology that's being used by 2.4 Wi-Fi. So all these other sources of noise other than what you want to hear are what we call co-channel interference, other devices using those same channels. So because we've got limited amount of spectrum, you know, in your office, if you've got multiple APs, you've probably got multiple APs using the same channel. So those APs will interfere with each other as will the clients on those. So smart antenna has been designed to reduce that, that, uh, that interference you get, that co-channel interference. It's designed to increase capacity by letting you put more clients on the same access point before you start encountering issues. And it increases coverage by being able to focus the antenna beam on where customers are. And I'll skip this slide here. So here's your traditional ceiling mount deployment, right? You've, you've mounted it up on the ceiling. It's got this nice round coverage pattern. Now you have another source of interference. It could be in this case, it's a microwave. It could be another access point. It could be who knows what. So that device is gonna create interference and it's gonna degrade coverage for these wireless devices here because the AP is picking up not only the data the client devices are sending, but it's picking up this interference coming from this other device. So with smart antenna technology, same deployment situation, we have the ability to go through literally hundreds of different antenna patterns. So again, traditional AP has one antenna pattern. Dual optimized antennas on our, those APs, those have two antenna patterns. Smart antenna has literally hundreds of antenna patterns that it can use. So it will determine in real time the best antenna pattern to use for each client device. And it'll take into account two different things. Where the client device is in relation to the access point and where other sources of RF interference are coming from in relation to the client and the access point. And it will choose the optimal pattern for each individual client. And it does this in real time. It does not require anything special on the client. Smart antenna works with any client device. So for those of you that would like more detail on that, um, there was a third party um, study done on smart antennas. This was a few years back by the University of Brescia in Italy. Their networking group decided to take the claims that us and Ruckus were making about smart antenna and put them to the test. So they bought our WAC 6503DS, they bought a Ruckus 700, they bought a Cisco 2702 and an Aruba 225. So, us and Ruckus have smart antenna, Cisco and Aruba do not. And the short version here is smart antenna made a huge difference in performance and our smart antenna um, implementation outperformed Ruckus's smart antenna implementation, particularly when it came with dealing with interference from other devices. So we have a white paper that explains this in more detail. We also have a link on our website to the full white paper 
um, for the full evaluation the university did. Um, one thing here I want to point out also on our wireless access point, which differentiates us from most of our competition. Um, if you get a chance, you know, hold one of our access points in your hand and then compare it to whichever other competitor model you happen to have, whether it's an inexpensive Ubiquiti, whether it's an expensive Baraki or Ruckus, and you will notice our access points weigh a lot more. So I do want to briefly talk about why that is. Um, it's basically designed for two things longevity of the hardware itself and performance. So when we're talking about these solid state devices with no moving parts, the two major causes of failure over time are capacitor failure um, and uh, heat fatigue, causing the chips to, the gates and the chips to overheat and break or causing solder to uh, crack. So we've approached that to solve those two issues in two ways. We only use solid state capacitors so these are not electrolytic capacitors, so there's no liquid in there to dry out or leak or boil over. The other thing we've done is we've really focused on heat dissipation. All of our APs will have a large metal shield that goes directly behind the PCBA and lots and lots of vent holes. So this pulls the heat off the PCBA and off the components and helps vent them out the back. Some of our competitors don't even have vent holes, let alone this sort of giant heat shield. Um, the other thing you will notice if you take ours apart, if you've been to a trade show and seen us there, um, we like to have a ruckus and a ubiquity AP that we compare to one of ours that have been opened up so you can see this with your own eyes. Um, we have a lot more shielding on the PCBA than most of our competitors do. Um, this just helps with EMI issues and gives you just a little bit better reception quality. The other thing you will see is we do not mount our antennas directly to the PCBA. Even a thousand dollar ruckus has the antennas on the PCBA. We move it and put another big old metal shield here that we remove off the PCBA and mount the antennas directly to that to give us just that much more isolation. So that helps a lot with the signal to noise ratio and helps a lot with those marginal connections. You know, when you're on the edge and it's the difference between, you know, sort of being connected and not working and being connected, but slow, but reliable. And that's true across even our cheap, you know, $89 access points. We use the same design philosophy and cues. So we now have Wi-Fi 6 products. We've got five different models of access points to choose from. All of these are available right now. Um, in fact, there are some shortages right now just because the demand has just been ridiculous um, starting about halfway through Q3, uh, but we are getting more of these in. So we've got five different models to choose from. All of these are true Wi-Fi 6. And the reason I'm bringing that up is some models are using older chipsets that don't support the full Wi-Fi 6 feature set. Um, we've got a dedicated Wi-Fi 6 webinar that I've done um, where we go more in depth into some of those features are and why you want them. So some of the older products that have been on the market, some of the cheaper products are missing some of these key Wi-Fi 6 features. Ubiquity next month is launching their Wi-Fi 6 APs. We've only put Wi-Fi 6 on the 5 gigahertz radio. The 2.4 gigahertz radio is still using 11N technology on those APs. We have full true Wi-Fi 6 on both radios, so both the 5 and the 2.4. So we've got these two models here. These are our entry level models. These are um, Nebula Flex, so standalone or managed in the cloud. 2x2 two two versus a 4x4. Four uh, this is a one gig ethernet connection. This uses a 2.5 gig ethernet connection. And then going up here, these are our uh, Nebula Flex Pro devices. So standalone, cloud, or controller managed. They all include one year of Nebula Pro Pack with them. So we've got here a two by two with dual optimized antennas, four by four dual optimized antennas, 2.5 gig interface. And then our, our bad boy here, the WAX 650S, our flagship model. Um, it has a dedicated Bluetooth BLE radio in there. It has a third Wi-Fi radio, which is just there for scanning the RF environment. Smart antenna technology. It's four by four on both radios, and it includes a five gigabit ethernet connection. So if you're going with this guy here, you really want to pair this with our XS 1930 switch, uh, which offers the new uh, 60 watt PoE standard as well as five gigabit uh, ethernet ports to get the full performance on it. 
So going on from APs now, we'll start talking a little bit about switches. So when it comes to switches, we have lots and lots and lots of different models. It gets confusing. So I'm gonna to try to explain the naming. So once you understand the naming, you can mostly figure out what each individual switch does and what the differences are. So the first thing you will see on our switch names is a prefix here. So if it starts with ES, it means it's a fast ethernet switch. We don't have many of these around anymore. If it's GS, it tells you all of the ports are one gig ports. If it is XS, um, it is telling you that all of the ports are multi-gig ports, usually 10 gig. XGS is telling you that most ports are one gig, but there are also 10 gig uplink ports on the switch. And if it's MGS, it tells you it's a Metro switch. Again, we don't offer many of those here in the US. If it ends with P or HP, it tells you that the switch is providing PoE power. And if it ends with F, it tells you that all of the ports are fiber ports, so no copper ports. Um, one thing you will see on many of our switches is we have what are called combo ports. So if you look at this switch here, if you look at the model number here, um, these are combo ports. This would probably be listed as a dash 10. So eight ports of regular and then your uplink ports. So when we have combo ports, there is a copper and an SFP. So in this case, we've got two copper, two SFP. The trick is, this is these are actually one port. So this one port is copper or fiber. You can choose which one of the two to use. And then the second port here is also the same. So there's only two actual ports, even though there's four visible ports there. And you just choose whether you want to use copper or fiber. And we do offer SFP ports. So if it's a standard SFP port, it means it can use one gig fiber connections. If it's listed as SFP plus, it tells you it can use 10 gig fiber connections. Many of our higher end switches have dedicated stacking ports and we sell a special direct attached cable to be able to physically stack the switches together. So, and when it comes to PoE here, you have Standard PoE, which is 802.3 AF. PoE plus, which is 802.3 AT. It doubles the power that you can provide per port from 15.4 watts to 30 watts. And most switches that we're offering currently are this PoE plus. And then there's also PoE plus plus, which is the new .3BT standard, which can provide up to 60 watts of power per port. So one thing most of our switches offer is intelligent PoE management. We have the ability to control PoE on a port basis and we have power scheduling. So you can have the PoE shut off at certain times, um, for instance, when there's no employees there that need it to be powered on. So that smart intelligence allows us to do something a little bit different. So traditionally the way PoE works is when the PoE device is plugged in, it identifies itself based on what class it is and then based on that class, the port or the switch reserves that much power for the device. So a class three device will request 15.4 watts of power for each device. Our intelligent consumption mode monitors the device and will realize that this device only uses a max of nine actual watts. So it can then free up the additional six watts of power here um, for other devices. So you can see here using the class basis, um, to plug in 24 of these, in this case, a phone, would use 375 watts of power. However, by using our smart intelligent mode here, we only actually use 216 watts of power um, coming through that switch. So it allows you to plug in a lot more devices. Another example here with an IP camera, it's a class four device. So it's gonna reserve 30 watts of power per each device plugged in. However, our consumption mode realizes that it only needs 16 watts. So it's a difference between 600 watts of PoE budget required to just 320 watts of PoE budget required to hook up 20 of these IP cameras. So let's start going through some of the models on the low end consumer slash Soho side of things. We have our unmanaged PoE switches here. These are gigabit switches, um, the GS 1005 HP and 1008 HP. On the business end of things here, we have our GS1100 series. 
So most of these are rack mountable, but again, these are unmanaged switches. And then we have the GS1200s. These provide some very basic web GUI management of the functionality for managing these devices. So these are aimed at the Soho space. Going up from there, we have an XGS1010 series. So these are our 10 gig um, Soho type switches. There's the 1010, which is an unmanaged switch and the 1210, which is a basic web management. From there, we go up into our, our, uh, our business class switches. So everything from here is gonna be more business oriented. Most of these are going to be um, rack mountable. So the basic web manage for business is our GS1900 series. Um, we're phasing in the V2s on these. So these are available in port configurations from eight to 48 plus uplink ports. Um, so these provide web management. Um, it's not a full web management, but it's more than what you would get on the 1200 series. The XS1920 is our 10 gig um, smart managed switch. And then we go up to the GS1920. So the GS1920s are, I would call our bread and butter. If you don't need a command line interface, this is probably for most business deployments, this is what you'd want to use. So this offers the most functions of our web managed switches, available in seven different configurations. 1930 series is very similar to the 1920s, but unlocks 10 gig ports. Um, we've got our NSW series. So these are our cloud managed switches. These have to be used with Nebula. So these are going to go away here. Um, and then you would either use the 1920s with Nebula or you will use the GS2220s. We have the GS2210 series. So this is our um, true layer two switch. It's web managed. It's got a command line interface for those of you that like that. Um, the XGS version offers the 10 gig ports. These will be getting phased out for the new X, or for the new 2220 series, which can be uh, Nebula managed. And then on the layer three side of things, we have the 3700 series, the 3800 series, and the 4600 series. So the 3800 series can be managed in Nebula. We've also got a series of what we call PoE switches. So these are switches that were designed specifically for those of you that do a lot of IP camera deployments, although some of the features here are kind of cool, might apply to other stuff. So the 1300 series is our unmanaged version of these switches. And these switches all have the ability to provide 250 meters for data and PoE. So traditionally, um, Ethernet is limited to 100 meters of range. So by putting them in extended range mode, we lower the speed to 10 megabits per second, but we can hit 250 meter long cable runs without having to use any sort of amplifier or extender. The 1350 series here, these are our um, web managed version of those switches. These can be used with Nebula or standalone. So these can provide continuous PoE. So even if the switch reboots for some reason, whether it's an abnormality, a firmware update, configuration change, PoE is not interrupted. So you don't have to worry about your connected devices then themselves having to reboot. We've got a view here which shows you the status of the connected devices, um, including their health, their IP address to manage them, et cetera. We've got an automatic recovery mode. And again, it's saying camera here, but this can work with other PoE devices. It's not necessarily limited to camera. Basically, you set up here to use either LLDP or ping to the device, and you determine how often you want to pull the connected device. And if it fails, you define how many failures in a row you want, and if it hits that number of failures, we'll automatically reboot the connected device by powering PoE on and off on that port. And again, you define and you let it know um, basically how many times to try to reboot it and how long to wait before resuming pinging to give the device enough time to fully power cycle back on. So, you know, if a device takes 60 seconds to boot up, you would define that here so it knows to wait at least 60 seconds before resuming the ping to see if it recovered or not. I know it was a lot guys, but that concludes today's webinar. If you have any questions, send them in. You know, today's presentation was to give you a very high level overview. Hopefully you've seen something there you didn't know we had, or maybe a cool feature that you didn't know we offered. 
If you'd like to learn more about those products, um, check out our webinar series. We offer a lot of webinars dedicated to some of this. Uh, but if you don't see that on our current webinar schedule, reach out to your salesperson, reach out to David Chan, reach out to Jacob, reach out to try it, let us know, hey, I'd like to learn more about these products. And we've got extra materials we can send you. We can set up a call just for you to go more in depth on any of the products or offerings here that, that might have piqued your interest. Um, for those of you that don't know, we do have a web forum now, so you can log in to our website. And it's a way to reach out to your fellow Zycel users to ask questions. Product announcements are made there. And our R&D and the PM team read those forums and often weigh in and respond to things. So it's a great way to get product suggestions, feedback, and stuff like that directly in front of the eyes of the people um, who can make those decisions and make those changes for you. OK, guys, I'm not seeing any questions. So I'm going to go ahead and end today's webinar. Um, if you did have a question, just feel free to reach me directly. My email is seanr, S-H-A-W-N-R, at zycel.com. Um, just reach out to me offline. Questions, feedback on today's presentation, suggestions or ideas for other webinars you'd like to see us put on, whatever it happens to be, feel free to hit me up directly. Thanks for joining us, guys. I appreciate you turning out.